So, yes, I'm born again. I love Jesus. I'm a son in this house. I may not, I, you may not have heard me speaking much, but believe you me, I speak. When you come near me, you will get to know how much I speak. So I'm glad and I'm honored to be um, standing before you once again, not that I'm better than anyone else, but it is just by the grace and the strength and the honor that which God has accorded unto me. Um, that's why I'm standing before you. And as I bring the word of God, I'm not bringing because I'm perfect. I'm bringing it because God has chosen to bring it through me. I'm just like a vessel that which is standing before you. So um, even before I dive into the word, allow me to appreciate Bishop and Mamalis in absentia for it is by their obedience that we are here. I also acknowledge every present pastor in the house. I know that the same kind of grace that God has given upon you or placed upon you, he has also placed upon me. So um, I'm honored even to stand before you. So today um, is yet another day, a day that God has called us into his house, a day that he wants us to hear from his mouth because he's always speaking. And whenever we gather in his house, we don't just gather so that we may meet with our fellow friends. Yes, it is good because we get to meet them in the same place. But the main objective for us being here, it is getting the guidance, getting the word, getting to hear what God is speaking concerning that state, that situation, that location that you're in, because he knows exactly where you are. In fact, he knows why you are there. It is we who sometimes assume that he doesn't know. You know, he, we assume that it is by our strength that we have come to this point. But believe you me, even before you came, he knew that you shall be here. The circumstances or challenges that you may be going through, they are not strange to him. He knows, and that's why he calls you his son, his daughter, as he also calls me one of his own. Um, so the word of God will be coming today from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, from verse 1 all through to verse 20. It's a lengthy a scripture, but because we have come into his house and we yearn and desire to hear from him, I don't believe it is long. It is only if we will listen and also get what he wants us to get out of it. Um, my brother, keep on playing. Um, keep on playing the songs. Um, so I'll read, and uh, I, I also know that we have been projected. It says, um, this is from verse 8, from verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 1. Eh? Every command which I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply and go and possess the land of which the Lord sowed to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, of springs that flows out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees, pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper when you have eaten full when you have eaten and are full then you shall bless the lord your god for the good land which he has given you 
Beware that you do not forget Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments and his statutes which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fairy serpents and scorpions in a dusty land where there was no water. Who brought water for you out of the flinty rock. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and might, my hand, my gained me, have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he saw to your fathers, as it is this day, then it shall be. If you will, if you be by any means forget, if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, you shall perish before you would before you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. Let us pray for the word. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for in this word we know there is a message for each and every one of us. We thank you that even you have called us into your house, for we know that you never call your children without something to tell them. You never gather your children around a table without something to feed them. We have come out of your calling. We have come out of an appointment that which you have upon each and every one of us. We know that it is by your guidance that we are in your house, O oh Father. How then we pray that you may open up our minds, that, Lord, we may get to understand what you are speaking to us today. Open up our eyes, that we may be able to see as you want us to see through your word today. Open up the hearts, O oh Father, of each and every one of us, that this word may have room in us, a dwelling place where it can multiply in it, O oh Father. And Lord, even as you do this, I also command, I commit myself unto you. And I pray that, Lord, you may use me just but like a vessel. As I stand before your great people, I pray that, Lord, you may give me boldness and courage that comes from above. I also offer myself as a tool, O oh God, in your hands. By the help of the Holy Spirit, may you speak through me, dear Father. Let every word that shall come out of me be words that which you have selected, chosen, and found to be fit for each and every ear in this place. Father, and when all said and done, every glory and every honor shall surely come back unto you. And it is in Jesus' mighty name this we do pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. And as the word of God is speaking and telling us or reminding us, um, it is speaking so much. It is reminding us of so much. And more so, it comes a time where we have just celebrated the faithfulness, the goodness of God for the past 40 years that he has walked with Bishop and Mom Alice. And we know that as they walked together, many are the challenges that probably they went through. Many are the issues that they encountered. Many are the times that probably they were in lack. But as God is telling us and speaking to us, it was with all a purpose. 40 has been a period of time that which he has worked with them for us to be here. And as we speak of 40, it doesn't matter when you joined this place. It doesn't matter when you joined this ministry. Uh, that period of time that you came in, that is the time that you are ordained to be part of us. And now that you are with us, now that you are seated in this place, that means we are all celebrating and rejoicing for the things that God has done um, upon Bishop and Mom Alice for the past 40 years. And so as God speaks and tells us about what is to come, about beyond 40, he's commanding and telling us 
each and every one of us. Regardless you joined today, regardless you joined last week, regardless you joined last month, he is speaking to you with the same voice that he is speaking to that one who joined 40 years ago. So, as he says from the book of Deuteronomy, um, he's saying from verse 1, and if, even um, before I also uh, dive into the word, remember, Deuteronomy is a book that was written by Moses. And Moses is a servant of God whom had traveled with Israelites for quite a long period of time. Um, a period of 40 years to be precise. But that is not the period of, God, of time that he has been walking or he had been walking with God. Before he started walking with Israelites, he had also walked with them for a period of 40 years as well. So at this point as he speaks, he's speaking from a point of walking with God for, 40, uh, for 80 years. Whereby God had been um, chastening him, uh, preparing him, ordering his path. Um, reminding and telling him what is supposed to be done, sharpening his mind and also his heart, removing that which was not supposed to be in him and adding in him what was not in him. So a period of 40 years to Moses was a period of training. Was a period. The first 40 was a period of training. And the second period was a, a period that which God used to execute what he had trained him to do. Now executing it before the Israelites, using the Israelites as the cata catalyst or the things that which he is ordering or people that he's ordering to do what God had ordained or trained him for the past 40 years that which he had been walking with God in the wilderness and this time he was walking alone. And now when we speak of Deuteronomy, we speak it is a book that which Moses wrote, wrote after writing the other three books. But now here, because he was coming to an end, he was reminding them of the commands that which God had given. He was reminding them of the ways that God ordained or ordered them to walk, even before they came to this point. And because he knew that they were going to another level, he knew that they were going to another stage of their lives, another place where now they needed to experience in a whole different way how God can do. Because for the first 40, as I said, the first 40 years, God trained Moses alone. Now, for the second 40, phase of 40, God trained the entire Israelites. And now, because after training, there must be execution. I don't believe that there is anyone who goes to class, be trained, then go, come out of school and go back to sleep. It is after you come out and graduate from the class, from the learning that which you used to do, that you are now sent to do and to execute what you have, taught, you have been taught. And at this point, God was reminding them, for he knew he was sending them now to the land of promise, or the promised land, where he had ordained, or he had spoken of it many, many years before. But now, soon or later, they were coming to see it. They were coming to a point whereby they shall experience firsthand of what God has been training them and what he had promised their forefathers. And so as he speaks of these commands, he's reminding them, he's telling them from verse 1 it says, be very careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter the, and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Now, what are these commands was he speaking about? What are these commands that is he uh, telling them to obey? There are so many commands that he had given, but summarizing them all, they, are, they can be summarized in three commands, you know, bringing them together and bringing them to a point whereby if they follow these three commands, they shall be following every command that God had given them while walking through the wilderness. Number one of the commands that he had given them, it is to love God, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. He was telling them, love God. In other words, love me. Now this is Moses telling them, love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Huh? So you may ask ourselves, what is or how is it to love God with all our heart? How do I love God with all my heart? You see, loving God with all our heart, it is loving God with all that which is within us. All that which is upon us. All that which is in us. Because as he speaks of the heart, the heart represents of that vital organ in the, in the, in the body of, the, of a person. 
You know, just like a president represents a nation, that if you attack a president, it is also signifying you have attacked the entire nation. And so when he speaks of the heart, he is speaking of the body, that with all your body, serve God. With all your body, love God. And he goes ahead and emphasizes this in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, whereby he says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your true and proper worship. Remember, our bodies are the temple that which God dwells in. As much as we know that this is his house, this is where he comes to meet each and every one of us in a wholesome way. But he dwells in you. He walks in you. He lives inside you for you, you are a temple in which he desires to live. But for we know that God is holy and he cannot dwell in a dirty place. The same way you cannot live in a place where there is stinking things, where there are dead stuff, where there are things that which are smelling awfully. Even God, when we entertain sin in us, that's the exact smell that comes out of you. That's the exact thing that he feels when he tries to come into you. And so what will he do? Just like you will do when you hear that in your house there is a dead rat. In your house there is a dead, uh, a rotting meat. You will tend, you will make sure to find out where it is. Because you cannot dwell in the same place. One of it must live, either you or the smelling stuff. And that is exactly what we find. When, what, that is exactly what God finds when we entertain sin in our bodies. When we allow sin to come into our bodies, it becomes that smelling rat. It becomes that smelling awful smell coming out of your body, coming out of you. For it is the temple that which he dwells in. And no wonder Moses tell, told them, love God with all your heart. Let your body be a place, a pleasing place for him to dwell in. He goes ahead and says, and with all your soul. With all your soul, my brothers and my sisters, your soul is one thing that is so unique. Your soul is one thing that, if, that shall never die. Your soul is one thing that when it comes out of your body, you lose your name. You lose your purpose. Your ID loses the purpose because you're no longer alive. So that means the soul is the living part. The soul is the living person in you. And the body is activated to live simply because you are in it. Simply because there is a living substance, a living thing in it. The same way, when this light that we are enjoying today, when they are switched off, everything turns dark. And so when the soul is removed from the body, so becomes with us. We all get into a dark place because it is our soul that brightens you. It is your soul that makes you who you are. And so these souls have unique characters. Every soul represented in this place, it is different from the other. It carries a different um, gift, a different uh, attribute, an ability that the other one doesn't have. They may be similar, but believe you me, you are all different. Different just like we are different with our thumbs or our fingerprints. The same way we maybe have been bathed by the same parent in the same house, but in the eyes of the government, you are very different. You may be twins, but in the eyes of the government, you are very different. You possess different names, different ID numbers, different um, everything. It, it is different, and so it is with our souls. We are very unique and very different. And so God is telling us in our uniqueness, let us serve God. Let us attribute all that which is in us to him. Help, allowing him to use your uniqueness. If you are uniquely blessed to be a worshiper, come and worship as my brother is uniquely playing tunes. You know, probably there is no one who can bring out tunes like he does because he's uniquely or uniquely joined together with a unique purpose. And so do you. At your workplace, you're so unique. Unique in how you love things how you do your things, the things that entice you. You're so unique. And that's what God is telling us, how we should serve him with our souls. 
that in your uniqueness, let him be praised. Let him be worshipped. The other one is, um, he tells us to praise and to worship God with our own strength. The strength that which you have. These attributes, the accomplishments. The things that you have accomplished along the way. The achievements that you have made along the way. He's telling you, even in those achievements, let God get the glory, the glory out of it. Let you, may you be, may the name of God be praised out of it. May the name of God be praised through that strength, through that achievement. You have built a nice house. How will people know that it is by God's provision that you have it if you don't call people to worship and to praise as you thank him for it? You know, that people may know, yes, I have this, I have achieved this, but by the help of God. And so that is the number one thing that God is telling us to, um, to do or the command that he's telling us to, to obtain or to have. And number two is do not follow other gods, the gods of people around you. For the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God. And his anger will burn against you. And he will destroy you from the face of the land. Huh? That means, out of this you may ask, then how many gods are there? Is it there only one true living God? Is it there only one God who created? But looking at the book of, from the book of Isaiah chapter 46, from verse 5, Going through seven, it says, with whom, now this is God asking, to whom will you liken me with? Or with whom will you compare me or count me equal? To whom will you liken me that we may be compared? Some pour out gold from their bags and weigh out silver on the scales and they bow down to worship it. They lift it up to their shoulders and carry it. They set it up on its place and there it stands. From that spot it cannot move. Even though someone cries out to it, it cannot answer. It cannot save them from their troubles. Now, asking again that question, is there another living God? Is there another God that can be worshipped? Yes, there is only one true living God. The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who created everything that we can see. But out of the imaginations of people, people have come up with other things. And these are imaginations that have been diverted. Imaginations that have been corrupted. Thinking that they can raise something which can be compared to God. But from the place of God, as he's speaking today, he says, who can be compared to, 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 to me? In other words, I believe that even as he speaks of this, he laughs, saying that he or she has put up a sculpture. She has crafted something out of a wood. He has crafted something out of silver or even gold. And they have positioned them or that thing at a corner, whereby they now proclaim and claim to be their God. But he says that even if they put it there, this God, this sculpture, this material that which is made out of what God created by his own hands, it cannot save them. It cannot move even from a single spot. Huh? You can imagine having a stagnated God. And if you serve a stagnated God, then what do you become? You become stagnated as it is. Huh? Because we live a true living God for we are still living. We become what we worship. We become what we look up to. We become like what we give our focus to. Amen. And so God is telling us, in other words, put your focus on me. Let me be your first and your last. Let me be your in-between as you walk in this walk of life and also walk of salvation. For I also believe that I'm speaking to people that have given themselves to Christ. People that are being led by Christ in their thinking. They are being led by Christ even in their buying and selling in the marketplace. They are not dependent on the things that people have crafted or words that people speak on others, thinking that now that is where their strength comes from. No wonder God tells us that do not rely upon men. Do not trust upon men. 
And if he says do not trust men, that means not even anything else that they create. Huh? Because whatever you trust, whatever you put your hope in, that's what you get. Whatever you give worship to, whatever you bow down to, that's what becomes upon you. Stagnation, a stagnated God, you become a stagnated person. Be sure to keep the commandments. The Lord, number three, now this is the number three um, command that God is reminding us. Be sure to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. In the book of Exodus chapter 20, from verse 1 to 17, it may be a long verse, but this, this is where we find the Ten Commandments. The commandments that God gave to Moses. The commandments that God reminded while he was walking, or he had gone to the mountain and leaving everyone else down. Where he also came and found some corruption of the mind. Whereby they had crafted a, a, a silver, a gold, a cattle, whereby they were singing around it. You know, this was the time that God gave Moses. And if we can go through and try to joke our minds and remind what God spoke to Moses. You know, he says in the number one command he gave, he said, you shall not have other gods before me. And when I say other gods, not G, the capital, the small G, the two small gods. You shall not raise anything beyond me, not even your money. Not even your, your, your family members. Not even your friends. Let God be God. Let him, be, um, uh, let him stay at his level. Whereby everything is under it. Hmm? Number two. You shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven, above or on earth beneath, or in waters below. Huh? You shall not bow down to them. Just as I have concluded. Remember I told you, he gave three commands. And out of these three commands, they hold waters. They hold weight to everything that God would want you to do. Now, the other one, he says, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Sometimes we are sinning. But even in sinning, you're calling God. You're stealing. But even in stealing, you're calling God when you're caught. Tigai fafa. Yet you're stealing. And you know that stealing is? That is now when calling or misusing the word of God. Amen. The other one says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Sabbath day. Like just like today, as we are seated in the house, there is someone who is very busy seeking for money. There is someone who thinks that now people have come together. People have not gone to job, but we'll capitalize on it. But God never goes against his word. When he says, make Sabbath a holiday, he knew that on Sabbath people shall be resting. But again, a voice that which speaks against the will of God comes and whispers to you, Capitalize on it. Biashara imeivana. Kuja tuanzie. Biashara. But when God says this, he wants to see obedience. How much, are you, how much do you obey him? How much are you willing to walk after him? When he tells you jump, will you start first asking him, uliniambia ni jump pale mbimisho, mali tumetoka? Or will you ask him how high? Huh? Because he first tests you. Before he gives you anything, he will first take you through a test. Before we graduate from our school, we first take a test. And even coming to Sunday, on Sunday, um, observing, observing Sabbath, it comes also as a test. He says, for six days, you go out. Do everything you can do. Make business. Make profit. But on the Sabbath day, come. Let us talk. Let us meet. Let us have a fellowship so that I may give you a secret. So that I may advise you on that plan that which you have. Huh? So that I may know we may, get, we may have an account of what I gave you last week. I may know if you are faithful enough to come with a tithe of what I gave you. 
the profit that I gave you last week, are you faithful enough to bring just a tenth of what I've given you? Giving you a million shillings, are you faithful to come with 100K? Or the moment million shillings hits your bank account, sherehe inanzia. Unasikikana ako mtuapa, ako wapi. Yet he was looking and desiring to look and to, de- to see you in his house. Huh? Hallelujah. Nasikati mtu. Um, it goes ahead and says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord God is giving you. Honor your mother and father. My brothers, there are blessings that God is reserving But there are also blessings that he has hidden in your parents. That when he says, honor your mother and your your father, he is giving you a hint. There are blessings I have given to your mother. There are blessings that I have given to your father. Just honor them. Just listen as they tell you, this is not the way. If he says to you, that man is not right for you. That lady is not right for you. He is speaking the truth. You know, because if you go ahead by your own eyes and desires of the flesh, they had seen it. But whoever will honor the beauty, the powder, the eye, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God, and through the parents, he can see deeper. He can see the heart. God can see the motives. Hmm? Hallelujah. So honor your parents. Let them know what you're doing. Huh? Shining with everything that you would want. First take him to your parents. Let them have a say in it. Let them have a say. Let them have an observation. They have been around more than you have. They have seen more characters than you have. Hmm? Let them have a say on it. Eh, wakwambie, eh, mulete tena. Huh? Mulete tena. He may be or she may be hiding something. Unajua paka pia naeza ficha kucha. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. It goes ahead and says, you shall not murder. You shall not murder. And the word of God says that murder is not only cutting a throat. You, you may murder character. You may speak falsely against others. You may accuse falsely without due diligence. At yule mtu, nilimuona mahali palikuwa na sin, ilifanyika, yete ya likuwa na kimbilia maziwa, atengeneze kachai. Wewe, bila kwanza kujua, ninini ya likuwa nafanya, alikuwa naenda wapi, alikuwa, you quickly said, I saw him. I saw her. You know, only for you to realize that hata hakuwa huko, Huh? You may murder through character. You may murder by discouraging, by speaking without wisdom. No wonder we ask God, give us wisdom. That every mouth, every word that shall come out of me, it shall be a word edifying, a word strengthening, equipping and not stealing. A word pushing people further and not taking them backwards. Because you may steal the purpose of God by trying to push people where they are not supposed to be. Hmm? It goes ahead and says, you shall not steal. Now we all know what is stealing. Taking without permission. Taking that pen without permission. You're stealing. Now jarudisha. Ndiyo uneza chiku ukandike. One, two, three. Urudisha. But wome chikuwa na ikakuwa ni yako na iyo. And where we have sinned, let us be asking God for forgiveness. Baba, Nisamehe. And he says he knows your weakness. He knows that you're not perfect. But, and that's why he says that I'm a faithful father. If you come and confess your wrongdoing. Nilichukua pen ya so and so. Wanjala alipo wacha pen nilipita nayo lakini siyanajua sijaiba, siyanajua ni miniko nayo. And the last but not least, you shall not give false testimony. Once again, you have to quote me on here. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs 
to your neighbor. Hmm? Unaangalia kwake biashara kuna mtu ako sawa na sales. Hmm? Unasema ule nitamuongezea vau 20. Come. You're stealing. Huh? Kwako kuna ndio utamchukua but kuna kitu pia God atatoa kwako. The faithfulness yenye wengine walikuwa nayo unapata ndio wanatengeneza faida but mnagawana na wao. Because God never turns against his word. Huh? Be faithful. Faithful. Someone's girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, hmm? husband, let them be a no zone. A no go zone. There are so many. Just tell God ni pe wangu. Instead ya ku kuangoje utaftiwe, uletewe, then una pita nayo. Hmm? Going on. So there are three commands that God has given unto us. And he's reminding us of the Ten Commandments and also telling us to love God with all that which we have. To serve him wholeheartedly and not to follow other gods. And so going on in the book of, um, uh, uh, going on from verse 2 to 5, if we may be projected. From verse 2, going downwards to 5. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven, above or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. At this point, I see a walking of salvation and walking through the wilderness, through the situations and the challenges and circumstances that we may have been found or gone through. Because walk of salvation, when we get born again, salvation is not a destination. But salvation becomes a starting point towards where we are supposed to be. A starting point towards where we belong. Because after Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, they were chased out. And after they were chased out, they have been walking far, deep and deep in the forest of sin. Whereby they have become corrupted again and again. You know, but now when we come to Christ, that now starts revising or reversing and we turn we make a 180 degree and now start going back where we had been chased out of we start now going back to the love of God to the will of God because the will of God upon each and every one of us it is to live a holy life to live a life without sin to live a life full of health and strength he never designed us to live in poverty he never designed us to live in sickness. Sickness is a corruption that came. Sickness is a thing that which was deposited in us after God removed his presence out of us. In other words, sickness came with the enemy, the devil. Because after we came out of the Garden of Eden, there is no one of us can ever live in vacuum. Someone else came in and started um, controlling us started leading and guiding us, pushing us to go in a certain way because that is the desire of the enemy. But now he says, as we go through back, as we go back through the wilderness, there are challenges and situations that we, come, we may find ourselves in. You know, things like financial dryness, emotional dryness, physical dryness, psychological dryness. And these are just challenges which come to challenge the walk that which we are walking, the decisions that we have made. And out of um, the book of Daniel, we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who said no to bowing down to the work that which the, uh, the king needed them to bow down to, to the gold and the silver and the gods that which had been crafted by man's hand. And because of that, there is somewhere they were pushed into. The same happened to Daniel, who was thrown into the den of lions. And the same also happened to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. 
There are times that we shall find ourselves in situations that are full of dryness. But that doesn't mean that God has walked away from us. It means that we are going through a testing, a period of time whereby we are being checked if we are truly and honestly walking with him because he is a faithful God. Observe the commands from uh, verse 6. It says, observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs, gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, um, pomegranates, olive oils, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing, a land where the, rock, the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of it. My brothers, out of as we walk through the wilderness, in our lack, in our situations of probably confusion, even in that, for God says that in everything we should give thanks. For in it, there is a work that which he does. Out of the dryness that we find ourselves, it is at the time that it is at that point that we realize how much we need to be filled with whatever we desire. And how much we can serve God with. In fact, it is at that point that God makes it known to you that what you have, what you have is a blessing. That what you have is a privilege. That the joy you have is a privilege. The peace you have, the peace of mind, the peace of heart, the health, the strength, the finances, they, they may not be much. But that little that you have, it is while in the wilderness that you realize higher. So I was this much blessed. So I was this much cared for by God. Because at that point you are totally dry, completely dry, seeking and asking of that help, which sometimes we may take for granted. Which sometimes we may look down upon and instead of appreciating, you are always mumbling and telling um, and saying how much you do not have. How much you are always in lack. But you forget that even in that small house that you are living in, there is someone who is out. Without even that small house, that car, what you to see, kaite car. Because it is big, as big as you are. As much as it can accommodate you. Huh? Mamalis once said that a single house can be made as big as you can, but by the power of cuttings. You can have two bedrooms. You can have three bedrooms as much as you will. Separate it. Hmm? It is when you don't have that you realize you have a lot. And so God is reminding us. God is telling you and me that there is plenty of blessings that which he has for us that which he has given us, even as we go through wilderness. The book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and to 19, it says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Not, not, now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. That even as you walk through this way, through the wilderness, through the lack. He's also reminding you today, I don't know who it is that he's speaking to. Even in that sickness, he's making a way for you, for you to come out of it. He's creating a plenty of waters in the wilderness where there seems to be nothing. He's refreshing you while in it so that you may be able to come out better, stronger, wiser, and above all, more humble. Because God uses the humble. The more you try to appraise yourself, the more he shall bring you down. For we all know that the way up is down. Huh? The way up is not puffing up your chest. It is not beating your chest and saying, I have done this. I can. I ha it is by being humble. Because God in due time, he shall lift you. He shall raise you to where you are. So today I do not know with the opposition to the sick. He's speaking that he's speaking and saying that I shall bring health. I shall restore you. I shall, I shall give you ability 
to serve you or to serve me in good health. To the lost, lost in the world, lost in the addictions of this world, he saying, I shall restore you. I shall bring you back to a place of purity whereby the only longing you shall have is of the word of God. The addiction that which you shall have is of the presence of God and the desire that shall be upon your heart. It is the righteousness, to walk in righteousness in Jesus' name. To the weak, he's saying, I will give you strength. To the poor, I will give you provision. You may be, probably even you have slept hungry, not because you are fasting, but out of lack. But even in that, he knows and he understands. And he's saying, I will give you plenty, plenty that you shall eat, and you shall remember no more the things that have happened to you. We may speak again and again, but due to time, and because there is other people who want to partake of what you have partaken today, allow me to bring it to that at this point, to the end. But keep on um, in your own. You may go on reading the, um, the entire chapter, chapter 8, and you will hear how much God is speaking and telling it to you. But one thing that I'm so sure of, all this that which he's speaking of, all the promises that he's reminding us, if you are out of his presence, if you are walking on your own, if you have not called him to be your lead and your guide, if you have not submitted to his authority and his power, all this will be just written words because they cannot be activated upon your life if you're still walking in stubbornness, if you're still walking in hardness of the heart, that you're praying to be strong enough to lead yourself because everyone who is out of salvation, everyone who is walking without Christ in them, they're also calling or speaking and saying that I am wise enough. I am strong enough to fight my battles. I am, I know enough where the land of promise is. Hmm? And the only way, but the only way you can submit to his authority, the only way you can walk with him, the only way he can be your lead and your guide, it is by asking him to come into your life. Asking him to take charge of your mind. Asking him to be in control through salvation. Are you here and you're not born again? You're saying from now I want to go back home. A new person. I don't want to go back into my old way of living. I don't want to go back to the old way of doing things. Into my addiction. I don't want to go back into the, to, to doing the things that the world is being entertained with. Huh? Ungodly stuff ungodly friendships, ungodly relationships. All these are just standing before you as barriers, as snares, holding you against the will of God, holding you far from the blessings that God has for you. Because in all that, you cannot enter the land of promise. Are you here and this is your desire? You're saying, I want to, be, to give my life to Christ. I want to be born again today. If you raise your hand from wherever you are, Every, every eye is opened and everyone alert because salvation is not a secret thing. Salvation is given openly. In fact, he says, if you deny me before men, I will also deny you before my heavenly Father. Are you here and you're not born again? And it is your desire to receive him. Remember, you came alone, you shall go back alone. You shall stand the same way you came alone before God and give an account of the decisions that which you made while you still had a chance. Are you there? Are you there? Okay, if you're there, for I know God speaks through anyone and everyone. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I know that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Take my name from the book of death and write it in the book of life because from today I believe that I'm born again and Jesus is Lord over my life Amen if you have said that short prayer believe you me you're not born again a bountified child of God you're no longer walking in darkness but you're walking in light the spirit of God has come upon you he now will be leading you guiding you out of those things that you have been walking in, slowly but surely, he shall see you out of it. May God bless you, walk with you, 
and keep on strengthening you as you walk into your new place of blessings. Amen.